Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse and this it's Billboard Breakdown. This was one of those weeks where I was predicting the big album bomb for Top by Young Boy Never Broke Again, and yet if you dig into the details, especially in comparison to how much havoc he has wreaked before, this almost seemed like a bit of an ordinary week for the Hot 100. Now, for me, that just means he's just actually out of my album bomb contention rules, so I'll be covering all of his new songs, but otherwise... This week seemed kind of normal, at least on the surface, when it became to a lot of chart behavior. Now, not saying it wasn't interesting, so please stick around for that. And for all of that, you want to look at our top 10, where for another week, WAP by Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion holds that number one. This should not be all that surprising. It is crushing streaming and YouTube. The sales are strong, and it's on a real radio run, but it does face some real competition coming from Dynamite by BTS at number two, which is utterly dominant on sales to an uh, frankly bewildering degree, but it's also fallen back considerably on streaming even as the radio is trying to keep up. This is one of those cases where when the sales collapse, this is going to fall back pretty fast because it doesn't seem to have much consistent traction in other channels, whereas Laugh Now Cry Later by Drake featuring Lil Durk at number three, it's another streaming monster for some reason, even if the sales suck. And hell, it's even got even more radio traction. Then we got Rockstar by DaBaby featuring Roddy Rich holding steady at number four. It's now very much in free fall, and frankly, the only reason it held its spots because Blinding Lights by the Weeknd is falling just as fast at number five. Although holding a little bit more sales support to compensate for some worse streaming. Should also be noted that The Weeknd also broke a record with the most number of weeks a song has been in the top five with 28 weeks. That's kind of impressive and the song's still great. Then we have Mood by 24K Golden and Ian Dior at number six. Again, I think it's just a matter of time and margins before this hits the top five proper, because while sales are slowing down, the radio isn't, and the streaming is rock solid right now. Something you can't really say about Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles at number seven, which is also losing everywhere, but especially on sales. Now, this might provide an opening for Savage Love by Josh685 and Jason Derulo, up now to number eight, which is what I would say if the radio hadn't slowed down and the sales and streaming just lost considerable momentum. Great timing there. Then picking up to number nine, we got Before You Go by Louis Capaldi, pretty much just on radio dominance as the sales are bleeding hard and this never had a lot of streaming to begin with. And at number 10, we got What's Poppin' by Jack Harlow and Crew, which is very much on its way out, despite a slightly better week on YouTube, but we'll give it that. Then we had our losers and our dropouts. And if you take a look at the latter category, it's easy to see how the whole album bomb we did have did have something of an impact. Deathbed by Pau Fu and Bia Badoobie is gone, as is Intentions by Justin Bieber featuring Quavo, and Party Girl by Stay Solid Rocky, all having clinched their year-end list spots, along with cuts like After Party by Don Tolliver, Why We Drink by Justin Moore, and Need It by Migos featuring Young Boy Never Broke Again that, well, didn't get their spots. But on the flip side, we didn't have much in the way of losers here. Off the debut, Relation by Sex, Rosalia, Daddy Yankee, J Balvin, and Faruko fell down to 75, and Hit Different by SZA featuring Ty Dolla Sign went to 77, and off the return, Do It by Chloe and Holly went down to 86. Then outside of Ice Cream by Blackpink and Selena Gomez continuing to collapse down to 61, just been a total non-starter there, we had Let's Link by Who Heem fading down to 96, The Bigger Picture by Lil Baby continuing to slide down to 71, and Nobody's Love by Maroon 5... Wait, what? This is a Maroon 5 song. You'd think it would have stuck around long enough for all of us to know and hate it by now. But it turns out it's actually in free fall on the radio. And if even they are starting to get sick of Maroon 5, that could be very telling. Because this is losing early. Now, interestingly, our returns and gains are a little bit more broad here. Because sure, you would all expect All In by Young Boy Never Broke Again back at 67. But what you know about love and got it on me? 
by Pop Smoke back at 83 and 100, respectively. That did surprise me a bit. Along with Three Headed Goat by Lil Durk, Lil Baby, and Polo G at 97, because this song will just never die. Now, I will say I can't say I'm all that thrilled about a lot of our gains here. Outside of the expected boost for KC Talk by Young Boy Never Broke Again at 50, the majority of these either kind of suck or really suck. I mean, I'm not going to complain all that much about Lemonade by Internet Money, Gunna, Don Tolliver, and Nob at 22, or More Than My Hometown by Morgan Wallen at 39, because I can tell some people really like these. I get the appeal, but ILY by Surf Mesa and Emily up to 49 when it's just such a nothing of a song? Then, sure, we had You Broke Me First by Tate McRae getting a surprising push to 69, but that's not as bad as Happy Anywhere by Blake Shelton featuring Gwen Stefani at 66, or Said Some by Money Bag Yo at 60, or Bang by AJR at 41. Seriously, that last one has both more radio and sales than anyone should ever want to admit. And if they ever figure out streaming, because the song This White Bread is just not going to move there, we could all be in real big trouble, because we do not need AJR to have more hits. But in any case... We do have new arrivals, and a lot of young boy never broke again to get through, so let's get things started with number 98, Dirty Stick by Young Boy Never Broke Again. Soon as I walked in, won't you for the mouth up? I'm gonna let this pop in. I pull up with a top down, with a daddy stick, and some shit to distribute. Okay, the big concern I had before this Young Boy album was sloppiness. I expected some offbeat flows and wonky vocals, but when you have production that is this developed with the piano, the bells, the organ stings, the lumpy groove, and the sharp sharper trap percussion, where it sounds a lot more staccato and busy, the last thing you want is to sound like you're really struggling to ride any sort of beat at all. No mincing words here, it's a real mess. And while it's probably intentional to ramp up his aggro gunplay and his rage, this just doesn't have any super raw intensity or darkness so much as it just feels overmixed and clumsy, not helped by how he threatens the families of people that he's trying to kill, and it feels like an awkward and maybe even desperate stretch. And it's not even saying his rhyme scheme is bad. More of it connects than it doesn't, much to my surprise. But when your rhythm feels this disjointed and you can't find the pocket in the beat, it makes for a really clunky, not all that good song. Next, number 95, You Got It by Vedo. You got it, you got it, oh yeah, 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 you my little baby. The first thing I was hearing about this guy is that he was trying to imitate Chris Brown in a smoother, wiry R&B lane. And yet, while I hear some similarities in his vocal timbre, I think Veto's influences are a fair bit closer to modern Usher, with a little bit more auto-tune and a little less organic swagger, especially as the fidelity of his vocal pickup seems to decay a little bit by the outro. But I do mean most of that as a compliment, because this brand of wiry, trap R&B with some nice twinkling melody, it's a good compliment for his delivery, and I don't think the content's all that bad either. It's a pickup jam, but it's at least kind of aware that this girl is a little bit jaded on relationships, that she wants to focus more on herself to repair things, and if she wants a guy who can be the provider or maybe a little more professional and understanding, for lack of better words, he can be that. But ultimately, the song is more about empowering her. And yeah, normally songs like this can creep towards condescension. I'm not going to forget Neo's Miss Independent anytime soon, but this is a little bit more tasteful and thus lands a little bit better. So yeah, I guess this guy might join Danielle Bradbury and Cassidy Pope as acts from The Voice who have actually seen some traction outside of the immediate sphere of the show. And surprisingly, his mentor was Usher on that show. So all right, I'm curious to hear more. This is good. Number 88, Right Foot Creep by Young Boy Never Broke Again. We're back to Young Boy for the next four songs, so let's not drag with these here. He's doing a bit of a young thug flow on the hook with some of the mushy enunciation, but he gets sharper along with the synths across the verses for your usual serving of murderous gunplay, where he then drops the R word. Kind of a shame, because otherwise he sounds a lot more focused and controlled on this groove for what this song is, which is otherwise kind of decent. 
Next, number 81, The Last Backyard by Young Boy Never Broke Again. Okay, this might be the best of the Young Boy songs we've heard thus far, and yet it's sadly not saying much. A weird thing I'm noticing is how a lot of the songs have a brighter melody line, this time consisting of a lot of the horns, but the actual percussion groove and the bass feels a little bit undercooked and underweight not quite as well blended or centered as it could be to complement all of his yelping about buying cars and shooting people. I mean, at least here he sounds a little more focused, almost gleeful at certain spots, but I do question why his hook is trying to go for this nasal sort of crooning that makes him sound congested, and it really does not follow through in a lot of the energy that comes through on the verses. Uh, you know what, it's fine, it's decent, but... I get the feeling he could do better with this. Number 76, Crossroads by Young Boy Never Broke Again. Okay, this was better than I thought it would be. Most because I don't think luxury rap and brand names are a good fit for Young Boy, as he always sounds way more interested in the paranoid shooting people thing. But that actually does feed into the loose theme of this song where he is actually reconciling with something that might have gone wrong in the streets. He took an L here and he admits it, and maybe perhaps seeing his escape away from it, but he keeps getting pulled back, where he might feel more alive, but could more easily wind up being dead. And not only does he actually bring some consistent intensity and ride the blend of guitars and the trap beat pretty effectively, there's actually a better hook here as well. Again, it's what you would expect from Young Boy Never Broke Again, but it's actually pretty good for what it is. I'll take it. Number 72, Dead Trolls by Young Boy Never Broke Again. So most of the Young Boy entries have been from the very front of the album. This song actually got a video though, so it's getting a little bit more attention from lower on the track list, and it might actually be a pretty good choice. Probably his most percussive and punchy groove with a lot of splashy keys and one of his stronger hooks thus far ramping up the obnoxious intensity for his desire to kill online trolls. Now in general, I'm not normally a fan of these songs coming from gangster rappers or trap artists. You should be above them. They don't matter. Just ignore them as much as you can. But for two reasons. One, young boy is literally that manic and blunt that he might actually strike a chord of terror with some in that audience, especially as he takes his targets really all over the United States and he might be kind of believable in it. And two, there's more than a few subliminals directed at 6 9 here. And if we're replacing the SoundCloud waifu with Young Boy, and on this song he could actually fill that role, he's got the hollering intensity to match at least Anneli Choppa, it might be an upgrade. And for what this is, I don't mind it. It's a fine song. Good stuff. Number 65, Gone Too Soon by Andrew Janikos. Okay, I didn't intend for the voice to be referenced twice in this episode, but here we are. An independent breakthrough single from Andrew Janikos, who was on the show just over a year ago and ran up the sales charts with this song. And folks, this might have been why it's a good idea to put Sam Hunt and his ilk out of their misery sooner rather than later, because Andrew Janikos is so obviously hoping to hop on that trend from the blocky trap percussion, the snap beat, the forced rollick throughout the twangy guitars, some seriously questionable vocal blending, and the pseudo-rap delivery that has me question, why is he not trying to sing more? Wasn't that your strength coming from the voice? Why are you doing this? Now, to his credit, Andrew Janikos is not as punchable as Sam Hunt. I get the sentiment of a love song and a long-distance relationship where they're at least kind of trying to make it work, but he does want to be closer longer term, and he thinks she does too. A lot of us have been there, but I, I gotta say, the execution does not sell it. It feels sterile and a little vacant. I mean, it's not something I hope catches on, although with our luck, probably will. Not good. Next. Next up, number 44, Drug Addiction by Young Boy Never Broke Again. Life for the party, right where my heart is. Songs where I won't come in, I see. 
anything go. Am I the only one who's seeing something in Youngboy opening up his new album with a song called Drug Addiction, especially after his run of singles for this project? I mean, is he trying to tell us somebody something? Is anyone surprised? I mean, the odd thing with this song is that outside of the lethargic hook and the woozy blur of guitars and this clunky trap beat, the majority of the song doesn't focus on drugs at all. More in his bloody come-up story to find riches, his girl is doing more drugs than he is. But again, he's not getting happiness so much as just numb paranoia. Now, I do think this track has a little bit more lurid detail to it, but the flows are still kind of clunky, the hook's not as good, and as an album opener, it's kind of a real slog. It's not his worst this week, but absolutely not his best either. Just saying. Number 36, Okay Not To Be Okay by Marshmello and Demi Lovato. I should be less disappointed that this exists than I am, because it really was inevitable. Demi Lovato's music has been heartfelt, but increasingly colorless, and I'd struggle to say she's improved much as a pop act in the past five years. So why not place her opposite the most bland EDM producer working today? Now, let me say, this doesn't have to be bad. I thought the Halsey Marshmallow collab worked and Come and Go with the late Juice World is still a strong enough song outside of Marshmallow's overcompressed contributions. And to be fair, this actually has a better groove than a lot of Marshmallow songs, especially with all that rollick on the drop, which gives a pretty melancholic track an okay dance bounce that I actually think amplifies some of the bleakness that comes with accepting and experiencing sadness. I don't mind that approach at all. The problem is that Marshmello has no idea how to work with Demi Lovato's vocals other than just shoving them behind mechanical filters for the hook and letting way too much compression and pitch correction creep in on the verses. This is a bad use of your Demi Lovato, Marshmello. She can be a competent and potent performer with huge pipes when she's not doing an impression of a modern Katy Perry ballad. I mean, what frustrates me is that there is a seed of a pretty decent song that could be okay here, but both artists' questionable instincts got in the way and we got a pretty sterile empowerment dance cut. I mean, it's not as bad as I was expecting, but it could have and probably should have been so much better. And finally, number 35, My Window by Young Boy Never Broke Again featuring Lil Wayne. No law, no law, so. Can't depend on niggas, wrist out left my hand cold. You think I'm trying to win for? All right, last song from Youngboy this week. Obviously got the big cosign, which is why it debuted as high as it did. But also because it's a pretty damn good song, if I'm being honest. Yeah, the melody is pretty basic before it fades into the staccato backdrop behind the trap beat. And I am not going to say that Youngboy never broke again, that his content is all that revolutionary. Sadly, that splash of greater imagination that we got in a few isolated songs months ago, it seems like it was a fluke. But there is a darker edge to some of the gunplay here, and the flexing that does help the atmosphere, even if we do get the line how he's inside the bitch with extendos. But the real star of the show, it's Lil Wayne, and I'm kind of on the fence whether or not his verse is ingenious or just laugh out loud hilarious, because he jams in so many interconnected references to windows and wonder that just feels like he was spitballing and having fun here, but he also drops into his old nasal intensity that reminds me of his best work, and he winds up stealing the entire song. His flow is great. So, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm not sure I'm going to call this the best song on the album, but I do absolutely think it is the best of this week. Best hook by far, easily the best verse. My Window by Youngboy Never Broke Again featuring Lil Wayne. And edging out Youngboy for the honorable mention, I'm going to say Veto with You Got It, which is a really solid at first impression. I kind of hope to hear more from the guy. But for the Worst of the week, kind of a toss up, but I'm giving it to the mess from Young Boy Never Broke Again that is Dirty Stick. With Gone Too Soon by Andrew Janikos for being the dishonorable mention, or just uh, being a complete dud of a first impression, he can do a lot better. Next week, Honestly, I'm not seeing a big breakthrough coming from anywhere, so maybe just going back to normal for a little bit. We'll have to see, but until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.